I'm John DeArmond with the Coquia Valley Star Group, and today we're talking about Article 10. So, let's begin. Article 10, the thread and the yardstick. You should always have a thread and a yardstick in your spirit. When you join the thread to your opponent at any time and measure him with the yardstick of your own straight spirit, you can perceive the points where he is strong, weak, straight, crooked, tense, or relaxed, and what intentions your opponent has in his spirit. With the flexible thread and the straight yardstick, you should measure round, angular, long, short, crooked, or straight things in your opponent and know your opponent well. This should be tested. So, the thread and the yardstick. These are uh, two mental tools um, that we use to sort of calibrate how we think about the opponent and how we think about our general relation to them. And though they both serve uh, different purposes, they're, they're connected and we'll talk about the connection uh, sort of at the end. So let's begin with the thread. The thread is uh, very simply put, the perceived line of attack uh, and clearance between you and your opponent where you're working. So when we teach Sasen, you know, when we're teaching them to, to thrust, we often tell them to imagine that there is a thread at the kisaki, at the tip of the sword, that pulls into the opponent's throat. And it's that pulling action along the thread that uh, helps to engender accuracy in their work. Um, now, another example of this would be, let's say that a uh, dude's pulled up on you and he's in, he's in Hasso or, or, or Jodan or whatever, and you see him start to, to move. His body begins to work into that place, right? You can connect the thread of your mind to him. Now, obviously, you, you're not going to connect it onto his line of attack because his sword is, is impeding your, your irimi. You're, you're entering into his space. Instead, you'll connect the line somewhere else, often behind the sword, whether it's, you know, to the wrist, into the neck, uh, maybe behind the elbow and arm, right? And rather than being sort of a, a laser line, a straight line between your center and the point you've chosen, uh, the line is flexible. It arcs, it moves, and it, uh, it sets up the kind of train tracks of your body's motion. Um, in the beginning, it's helpful to uh, really imagine and visualize the line. It's in its entirety. However, once you get, um, uh, I guess, familiarity with this idea, when it becomes comfortable in your mind, you, you don't need it. You don't need the middle part. You don't even need your part of it. You just go, that's my point of connection, boom, and you move in. Um, so uh, what's, what's the utility of this? Why do we have to, you know, it seems pretty obvious that like, oh, you want to attack a guy, you, you choose a place and you hit him there, right? Why would we need some sort of uh, seemingly extra special thing? And the reason for that is that because of how people tend to react under stress pressure, right? We tend to do one of two things, right? When somebody comes at us, either we just lash out at them or we try and move away from danger. It's that fight or flight reflex. Um, uh, which, by the way, the majority of people are flight type people. And both fight and flight reflexes are typically bad for what we want to do. <laughs> um, I mean, you, you would think that, oh, right, guy comes to hit me and my instinct is to hit him first, that would be really good. Uh, it depends on the skill level of the dude and your luck and your training, right? Uh, so, what we see a lot is we'll set up a drill 
um, goes something like this. Uh, dude's going to swing or punch or attack you or, or whatever, and your job is to slip the attack and, and, and take him down or, or, or cut him down or, or do a, whatever piece of work that we're sort of uh, studying at that point. Um, that's a very simple, very simple idea, right? Go in, don't get hit, hit the other dude. But what tends to happen is uh, the Uchidachi will attack and Shidachi will void, right? In the beginning, everyone voids to the back, right? And then they try and come in and work and they can't do it. Then they'll start voiding to the side, they'll step to the side and then they're way out of range. And then even when they start to understand that it's, it's too far, they come in at uh, sort of a 45 to either side, um, they do it in such a way that still outdistances them from the work. Um, the problem is that for most people, and I think beginners especially, uh, they confuse this uh, failure of distance, timing, or relationship, the failure of their ma'ai, to a lack of speed, right? Because from their perception, the dude gets a head start on them, gets to them, and right away they can sort of defend themselves. And they feel like, uh, you know, no matter how fast I move, I'm not faster than the other guy. And this is, um, it, it's, it's an error of perception, right? Um, We've talked about speed and, and kind of the fallacy of, of speed, the, the pursuit of it in martial arts a lot, but we're gonna we're gonna touch on it again, right? <laughs> Keep circling it till people can see. You can beat a person even if your speed is dramatically slower than theirs. So long as your distance, timing, and relationship are in accord, right? If they are not in accord, it does not matter if you are faster than them, unless their distance timing relationship is worse than yours, right? But if all things being equal, the speed, the physical speed of motion by itself uh, does not matter that much. I mean, it, it matters for lots of little things, but it doesn't matter for the things that people perceive that it matters for. And unfortunately, um, until you start to really deeply explore this and, and, and work with partners um, and be willing to fail a lot so that you can take your time to observe what's actually going on, it's very difficult to sort of see this information. And so people get sort of like sidetracked chasing, you know, it's like, like, like oh, faster, Faster draw, right? Faster cut, faster tight sabaki, right? And it's uh, speed isn't bad, but speed for speed's sake leads to coarseness and uh, really putting yourself in poor positions. Um, anyway, so why does this happen? Right? Students know what they're supposed to do. They're not, they're not you know, mentally deficient. They, they, they know what they need to do. Get out of the way and, and come in and work the dude. Why are they moving to places they can't work them? It's because of their focus, what they're thinking about, right? When you tell somebody, okay, here's what I want you to do, uh, A, B, and C. You put them in a, in a scenario and they start thinking about themselves. Okay, I need to do this, I need to do that, I need to do this. And that kind of uh, egocentric thinking where we're focused on us uh, retards our ability to accurately perceive the opponent, our relation, our distance, and our timing uh, compared with them, right? Uh, in harmony or lack thereof with them. The thread circumnavigates this. It says, hey, just, just cut that out. Stop that. Stop, right? Instead, connect your thread, follow it in, right? And immediately, you resolve all three issues of distance, timing, and relationship. You resolve the issue of, of the voiding, uh, 
the attack and avoiding your distance too far so that you can't work on them. Um, because again, obviously, that thread can't exist where their weapon is, where the danger is. Uh, or it would just get cut, right? It would be in the way. Um, so just by following the thread, you naturally tend to avoid their work. Um, now, of course, at a, at a very, very low skill level, um, you know, techie can still hit you, right? Your, your, your opponent can still get you because you haven't quite refined your body's uh, instinctual movement processes, uh, how you manage your comportment, how you're, you're navigating your own body and using that to navigate the space between you and them. Uh, and the, the sort of force, the interaction that they're putting forward. But as you get better, as you train yourself more, your uh, subconscious mind, your, your unconscious mind, takes over that. And it goes, oh, right, I understand now that I'm moving with my tail tucked. I understand now that I'm moving with, a, with tall posture. I understand now uh, that I have many different axes that I can rotate on without hampering my ability to uh, rapidly adjust to unforeseen circumstances, to apply work into the person, uh, sort of on and on and on. So the thread is, is a very, very useful tool and um, you gotta work with it, All right? So next, we come to the yardstick, right? The yardstick is basically uh, like the saying, you know, you have to get the measure of a man um, or lady. <laughs> uh, when we train by ourselves, don't have a partner, you know, we're doing our, our own, uh, our suburi, or we're going through the kata and, and doing shidachi or uchidachi side of it and we're just working on ourselves, what we should be doing is very intensely focusing on ourselves, on our composure, on our shaping, right? It's more of that, what we were just talking about. We are refining our body posture, right? We're refining our, our modes of movement, our tight spaki. Um, this, process of intense introspection teaches us things that we didn't know about ourselves. And once we know things about ourselves, we can begin to recognize them in other people. Um, so for instance, the, the easiest one and the one that I prefer to start most people with is breathing. Observe your breathing. Observe your breathing in training. Observe your breathing in your, your private time. Really spend, uh, I mean, if you just spent a day and you kept your focus on your breath the entire time, you would learn so much uh, about how you breathe, right? Not just the mechanics of it, but how your breath is affected by your environment, uh, both your external environment and sort of your, your, your interior environment, your mental scape, so to speak. And what most people find almost immediately is that for the majority or for, for very large sections of their day, they're holding their breath, right? Um, not in one contiguous sort of uh, time, but in large chunks. Like, oh, I'm thinking about something, I'm holding my breath. Oh, I'm doing a focused task, I'm holding my breath. Oh, I'm intensely uh, focused on something that's interacting with me, I'm holding my breath, right? Um, once you have that information about yourself, of course, you can begin to correct this uh, again, whether it's breath, whether it's posture, whether it's movement, whether it's uh, how you hold your body weight, whether it's uh, your your ino kokoro, right? Whatever it is, it's that self observation that sort of informs yourself, like, oh, right, this is the problem. Now I can fix it and resolve it. Uh, the other side of that is that when you realize, uh, sticking with the breath, right, that you hold your breath all the time. You'll look at a person and you'll key in on their breath and you go, oh, you're holding your breath. 
right? And then it evolves. You go, right? You hold your breath at this time. I hold my breath at that same time. If I can create that circumstance, I can make you hold your breath, right? Without you being conscious of it. If I can do that, then I can cut your endurance in a fight, right? It's a, it's a, it's imminently pragmatic psychology applied to your opponent and yourself, right? You got to apply it to yourself first. Um, and that's what the art stick is. The art stick is, hey, you've re refined your own body. You've looked at all of these different things in your work through your intensive practice. Now you look at the same things the other person, right? And it reveals their nature. It reveals their work. It reveals their internal character, their, their, both their moral character, uh, their kind of psychological character or, or, or posture, right? You know, are they brittle? Are they supple? Are they strong? Are they weak? Are they straight? Are they crooked, right, and deformed? Uh, and I don't mean this just in like a, a big vague way. I mean, in, in very specific ways, you're able to observe this in their work um, before they're working. And as sort of segmented bits of their work. Like, okay, well, they have this kind of quality to them, but when they make this attack, that attack has an entirely different, uh, not entirely different, but it, it has a, an aberrant quality to it that you can crumple, uh, that you can contort, that uh, you can exploit, right? And that's what the art stick is. It's use your experience to measure them, right? And it's an intense focus on them. So in the beginning, we mentioned that uh, these two concepts, though they're, they're quite different, they, they do in completely different things, they're connected, right? And so how are they connected? Why are they included in a singular article? Um, you know, what's, what's, the, what's the secret sauce, right? And the answer is that these are both catalysts, right? They're both, in using these tools, you are uh, encouraging in yourself a state of transient hypofrontalityism, right? Uh, what this is, uh, modern researchers call it the flow state, uh, but it has lots of different names. Uh, being in the zone, right? You got your runner's high, uh, you know, it, it's that, that moment where, like, you're in that stressful situation, and all of a sudden, the stress is gone. It's just gone. Everything's easy. Uh, there tends to be intense tacky psyche as sort of uh, a misperception of time or a different perception of time. Things moving much, much faster or things moving much, much slower. Um, when people have adrenaline rushes and they they note uh, this shift in time, it's not actually because of the adrenaline. Uh, it's because of this sort of intermittent, you know, shutting off of the prefrontal cortex. Not shutting off, but uh, uh, lowering in its functionality, right? And the prefrontal cortex is, is the kind of, uh, it's the part of your brain that associates you with you, right? It's, it's your, your, your ego, right? So if I think, let's go back to the, the drill, right? Person's attacking, I got to slip it, I got to come in and, and do their work. If I'm in that position and I'm thinking, I have to slip, I have to step here, I have to attack. I'm telling my brain the whole time by engaging that area that this prefrontal cortex, that's the area that I need to use to solve this problem. Uh, the problem is, your prefrontal cortex takes up a huge amount of your brain's, uh, let's say, RAM, right? It's the amount of power that it can apply at any time. And so it's like you're on your computer and you've got a, a dozen different programs running and it's like everything is going slow, this computer's garbage, I don't know what's wrong, there's a problem with this. And it's like, it's not a problem with it, you used to have too much stuff running at once. You start shutting things down, keep what you need, 
and then boom suddenly it's like a brand new thing right brand new computer suddenly you're superman um so instead of thinking the i i i i i and then oh god i'm going to make a mistake i've made a mistake i have to make this alteration you know instead your focus becomes entirely exterior you go there's the point boom your thread's connected and you just go there right you go oh they are moving in this way the yardstick that you already have constructed you can't you can't like oh what, what do i do in the middle of battle like i think that means this because i do that you know you don't have the time right it's too slow but since you've already done the practice thoughtfully mindfully attentively you already have the tool you recognize it without trying to recognize it in other words you don't um if you're in open-handed martial arts, you've taken lots of punches to the face. When someone goes to punch you in the face, it's not here that you see it. It's here. Because you've observed it enough. Right? And it's the same way with swords. No different. Except that swords are a little bit slower. Right? <laughs> there's there's uh, less places they can come from. So in a lot of ways, it's easier uh, physically, objectively, mechanically, um, even if it's harder psychologically. Um, but yeah, by changing your focus from that interior egocentric focus, the exterior Inzan no Metsuke, the eyes of the distant mountain, right? When you when you look at a, a, a scene outside or a fine piece of art, you don't uh, go, okay, top left corner, I see this, I see this, I see this, I see this, next row, I see this, I see this, I see this. You don't try and break it down into to segments. Instead, you view it uh, holistically as one thing. And it's the same thing here, right? You've connected your point and you see the whole person. You see the whole environment that you, that they are encompassed in. I mean, you're in, you're in the environment too, but you just don't have to think about yourself. And you don't think about yourself when you're doing this, right? It's just them. It's just however many people you're working against. It's the environment that you're in. And it's just easy. <laughs> it's just easy so the the thread and the yardstick are useful tools in their own right by themselves to teach people to come in the distance to teach people to recognize work and to recognize weakness and recognize strength right you don't want to if if you're working against a guy and he's like yeah you know i took state and wrestling you're not going to wrestle him and play his game where he's strong at you're going to avoid his strength you're going to work you know to his weakness from where your strength is. Right? So it's same, same. But in addition to being powerful tools in their own, they, they encourage this state that uh, Musashi, Musashi talks a lot about, and that's this Mushin, right? The flow state. Right? So it's really worth. Um, even if your work is not sword work, even if you've just sort of happened upon these videos uh, from some other interest, these are very powerful tools um, with a lot of utility. So make, make the most of them. <laughs> As always, if you want to understand these things, you have to pick up a sword and go train. <laughs>